Here I have a Fluke 87 digital uh, multimeter and today I'm going to show you how to test for uh, blown fuses and how to replace a fuse. The whole procedure is pretty much straightforward. Um, basically, you know, you're going to blow a fuse if you um, put too much amps through this meter. So, uh, that obviously happened with this. I don't even know how I blew a fuse, but I did. And I'm going to show you um, what you need to do is to diagnose it first. You know, which fuse you need even before you open it up. The tools you're going to need for the job is your multimeter. You're going to need a Phillips screwdriver. You're going to need a flathead screwdriver. You're going to need a new fuse. And, how can I forget? You're going to need some leads. So, first of all, what you want to do is my leads are a mess right now, so I'm going to have to straighten those out. But, don't need to plug that in, but I'll do it anyway. Plug that in. Calm. Excuse me for my mess. I gotta straighten up this mess, but I'll work work with it as it is. Um, put your meter leads in. Put your meter to ohms. And what you're gonna do is you're going to ohm out the amps and the milliamps. When you ohm out the amps, it's gonna be good. Ohm out the milliamps should get a reading as well. I see, I'm not getting nothing. Overload. Putting on the back side. Beep, beep, beep. Works good. Okay, it's one way to check it. Sorry, now my milliamp fuse is bad. Another way to check it, put to diode. Now remove your positive, put it in the amps, it's gonna beep. That's how you know your amp's good. Put it in the milliamps. Doesn't beep, should beep. Now your fuse is bad. Another way you could do it is, uh, that's what my teacher told me, it doesn't really official, but um, also works. Put it to ohm, same deal, beep, 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 no beep, no milliamps is bad. So that's how you diagnose it. And then um, there's a website too, I'll uh, show you just in a moment that um, you could run your, through your whole meter and your serial number and I'll tell you which fuses you need. So I'll show you that in a second. This is the website you need to go to. It's on Fluke's website. It's a fuse selection guide for um, Fluke instruments. The website is fluke.com slash fluke slash service fuse guide. I'll put the link in the description. I'm not gonna go nuts but what you do basically have a drop down menu right here. Pick your model. I have a Fluke 87. Hold on, it's down a bit. And it has a serial number too. It has two choices. So mine's after uh, 656500, whatever the. I click that, go to next. And uh, you're going to see your fuses an F1 fuse and an F2. You can buy a five pack, you can buy five pack of the, well five pack of the F1, five pack of the F2. Um I have a bad F1 fuse, so the part number for that is nine four three one two one or the online store it's three four seven eight seven oh one. Here's my fuse, got it from eBay. It was kind of pricey, eight dollars ninety four cents shift. So that's where you can get your fuses. Fluke, they want about like 10 bucks a fuse, say 10 bucks. Or you can buy the uh, the five pack for $25 and you can go sell them. So that's what you need to do with that. And uh, now I'm going to show you how to disassemble your meter and uh, replace that pesky fuse that's preventing your meter from working properly. To replace your fuse, you first have to remove this protective rubber insulator around your meter. Basically, it just peels off on the side, you work it, pops right off. Every place the battery, you know to take this off. Pretty easy. Cover is off. We have our meter. Looks a little more slim. Alright. 
if your meter is still in a warranty, wouldn't advise breaking a seal. But if it is, you're going to have a seal over there. See, mine was looking pretty good. I was going to put it right back over it, but it broke. So it's no good with that. Anyway, going to have three screws. One screw is going to be behind there, so if you can't find it, it's over there. There's your calibration. Mine's due for calibration. Oh, well, I'm running it as is. Anyway, what you first have to do is you have to remove your battery. It has little locks on it. You just basically turn it. And you turn it. I'm trying to do this with one hand. And you can get that battery tray off. So let me go free up my hand, and I'll show you where the other screws are. When your little uh, locks look like that and that, you can just lift off your battery tray. Underneath there is going to be a 9 volt battery. Take that out. Disconnect it with one hand. Come on. Yes, got it. Parts pile is growing. And there's your two screws. So you got this screw, that screw, this screw. All Phillips. You have to remove them, your Phillips screwdriver. And you can get this case apart. So show you that when all the screws are out. I uh, removed all the screws and to remove the case you have to start on the battery side. You just kind of rip it rip it apart. Well not rip it, gently rip it apart. And uh, your top piece over here is going to have little locking tabs that um, kind of lock into the front. There's your little tabs right there. So when that's apart you have your little keypad deal that can come off. That can be replaced as well if it is bad. They do sell them. There's your face plate. Put that to the side. And um, this is the main board. So with that, you can go one step further and uh, remove your whole board piece. It kind of lifts out of place. Be careful. And now you can work on getting these fuses out. This is a pretty tight fit with both of these fuses. So if it gives you trouble, you kind of see how there's a spot on the board. You can just kind of knock it out your screwdriver. Or if you're good and your meter's loose, you can just kind of wiggle it out. Another um, thing I want to mention is you see this dial over here? The dial's marked. You see the little arrow? Right here is the off. Sometimes when you remove this faceplate, you can knock this out of whack. When you put your meter back together and the battery in, it's going to read the wrong setting. So. That's just another tip. The first time um, I took it apart, I actually had this little arrow pointing over here. So it was reading, um, <coughs> what was it reading? It was reading uh, amps to her, her amp test. So uh, that was pretty strange. And I'm like, why isn't this thing turning off? And then I took it apart again. So uh, just be careful with that because I'm not really sure if this is designed to get turned more than it should but I guess so because mine still works anyway this is your F2 fuse right here this is your F1 fuse this fuse is bad on mine so here's my replacement so I'm gonna replace that fuse it's pretty easy this pulls right out like I said from the back a little bit tricky but you'll get it out this is my old fuse Make sure it reads the same as the new one, DMM4400, DMM44 slash 100. I forgot to say slash on that one, whoops, sorry. But, uh, ouch, don't break it. Um, it's the fuse, looks the same, made in Mexico. So we gotta pop this one in, right in the slot. Boom, and that's it. Um, of course, before you put it all back together, test that it works. You can also, um, that's another thing I was going to tell you. If you're inclined to and you really want to uh, test it, you can, uh, instead of doing a whole little thing I showed you before with the, uh, with the dial and the different settings, you can also just ohm out the fuse. You know it's going to read high if it's uh, blown. If you have another voltmeter too, you can do that test without using your fluke meter all apart so that's just another tip but uh, that's her shoes so let's put this thing back together and see if it works again place the whole board and the LCD screen back in make sure your little power connector isn't going to get pinched that just goes like so and down in that corner then we can put our 
main piece back on. Goes in the front. Clip clips in like so. Then before putting the screws in, we can put a battery in and fire it up. The meter is somewhat back together. Um, now we'll repeat the test again that I did before. So put it on ohms first. I almost want the diode test. Sorry about that. I'll test my amps again. Point two. Test a milliamps. Wow, look at that. That's about the reading too. The manual will say that 1.001 to another range that I really don't know offhand. You're gonna have to consult your manual. And uh, I'll do the diode test again. Should beep, beeps, beeps, and the ohm test. Beep, 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 beep. So. We are good. Oh, and you can also pull out your old fuse if you really wanted to now that your meter's apart, but I'm not going to bother doing it. So, what you have to do next is remove your leads, flip it back over, ouch, battery, and uh, put your screws back in, your battery tray, and put it back in your protective rubber case. When you put your screws back in, the screws are kind of like a self-tapping um, thread. So what you do, always with a self-tapping screw, I'm not sure if you know this or not, you turn it backwards. So then you're going to hear a pop, and then you can go forward and tighten it. So what you're basically doing is you're aligning threads, so when you put your screw in, it won't strip out the, uh, the plastic, which isn't a good thing. So that's a tip for you. The screws are back in. Battery tray is in and locked. And the meter is back in its protective yellow case like nothing ever happened. So next time you have to replace fuses in your Fluke 87, I uh, hope you watch this video if you don't know how to do it. And I hope it helped.